Today we're going to be looking at the data analysis features that are new to ChatGPT 4.0. If you're new to the channel, please hit subscribe to keep up to date with all my videos on AI, stats, research, and random stuff. So I've done a few videos on some other AI data analysis tools, but today we're going to be putting ChatGPT 4.0 to the test. These are relatively new features, and even just in the short time that they've been available, there's been even more little bits and pieces added to them. The data analysis and ChatGPT 4.0 is available to everyone, but a free user only gets very limited use of it before it caps out and will tell you you need to wait 24 hours. So the amount of analysis that I test in the video today can really only be done on a paid plan, and it is something that I think will actually push more people towards the paid plan. Having done a little bit of testing already, I've been really impressed. This is really going to put some data analysts out of a job at some point, I think. And so let's dive in and take a look. We're going to be using this data set from the Australian Institute of Sport. So it's a whole lot of athletes and a whole lot of measurements of those athletes. We're going to be analyzing this. I've uploaded the CSV to ChatGPT and also given it a link to this page that we're on now. When I uploaded the CSV, it gave me a little display table here so I could see it. For some reason, if I lost the data, I can re-download the table as well. And the very first instruction I gave it was to plot a scatter plot, so nice and simple. And if we come down, we can see here's our scatter plot. A very new feature is to make these interactive. So you can actually hover over points and it will give you the data. If you want to have a static plot, you press the button there. Next one along, we can change some colors and we can download it as well. So do a little bit of a zoom there. Uh, we download it, download default as PNG file. We can also, the little blue arrow here at the end of the statement, click on that for view analysis and it will show us the code. We can also select always show details to always see the code. We can also copy the code. All the code is done in Python. So scatterplot came out exactly how we asked for it, and we can see it's a positive relationship between height and weight as we might expect. So next up, I asked to plot the correlation heat map for all the numeric variables, and again, you can see did it really easily. Uh, we can see a little message here, interactive charts of this type not yet supported, that's fine. We can blow it up if we want to see a bigger one, and it looks pretty good. So blues and reds for the positive and negative correlations. And so this is definitely something we might be putting in some sort of report. So far I've just asked for the graphs, I haven't really asked for any interpretation. As I've gone on I've asked a little bit more interpretation out of the analysis, probably something I should have done back here with these other ones as well. So next up I asked it to perform a k-means cluster analysis across numeric variables, and I wanted it to describe the clusters and link to the relevant sports. I didn't tell it how many clusters to use, and so it decided on three. The description it gave was, I guess, very specific. It's given the characteristics in terms of all of the averages, and also counts of how many uh, how many athletes from each sport ended up in that cluster. And we've got our three clusters there. Being Python, it numbers from zero rather than one. Something to note if you're not used to that. And then very, very brief description. And so this was pretty good where I was able to say, well, why did you choose three clusters? And it said, well, kind of picked them slightly arbitrarily for simplicity, but then it went on, and this is just purely off this one very little simple prompt, and this is kind of something I might have asked of a research assistant, and they said, well, one way we could do this is the elbow method, and we look at the within cluster sum of squares, we get our plot, we look for where the sharpest bend is, so it's coming down, uh, and so where it goes from uh, steep to flattening out, Probably somewhere in that three to four. And that's what it concludes. Somewhere in those three to four. So then I said, well, okay, let's perform four clusters and describe the type of athletes. Got the same description again. 
got the same bits and pieces here again, but really what I wanted was a little bit more interpretation than this. This is great and very important, but beyond that, I really wanted something that I guess was a little bit more of a non-technical interpretation. Uh, and so I said, let's write a sentence describing each type of athlete. And here it definitely did a good job. So here's the key characteristics. So relatively balanced BMI. And here's the typical sports. So this was what I was looking for with my original prompt. And good reminder that sometimes you don't get immediately what you want out of ChatGPT. But by just adjusting what you're asking, making it nice and clear, you normally can. So we've got the description of our four different clusters. Again, remembering it goes from 0 to 3 because it's Python. Next up, so now I was getting explicit with asking for interpretation. Give me a t-test comparing average weight of the males and the females in the data set. Didn't give me a confidence interval, uh, but we can have a look. I'm a little bit used to, more used to R, where R will just give you the confidence interval as part of the output. Python does not. And of course, I could have asked for the confidence interval either up front or after the fact when it didn't give it to me. It's given us a p-value. It's very small, so very strong evidence. Uh, there's a significant difference between the means of the two groups. And that is what it concluded. So then I wanted to really try and push it. And this is where, with the previous videos where I've done on some of those other AI tools, they started to fumble a bit. So I want to know about athlete weight. I want to use all of the other variables to model it. I want three different modeling techniques. But beyond that, I'm leaving it to ChatGPT to figure out the specifics here. But I do want the description of the model and what metrics got used to compare the models and then a justification of a best model. And so it chose linear regression, which is probably the most sensible and most likely. Random forest regression and a support vector regression. So three different versions. I would have been very disappointed to not see this one. Certainly with the other AI tools, they came out with some other stuff. There was normally some sort of regression tree type thing. And then the third one was also a bit more mixed. They've determined some metrics that we'll use to compare. And these are all perfectly reasonable. They're not the only ones we could have chosen. Uh, but with no other prompting, that seems okay. It's described the process. So even though this is kind of going on in the background, it's still told me what it's done before just spitting out results. It's given us all of the pre-processing code there. In fact, all of the code all together. And then it has given us some results here for R squared and for our mean square errors. And then let's figure those out for each of our three models. If I wanted to interrogate this more and if we were being a little bit more fussy, ideally it should have been an adjusted R squared rather than an R squared. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how much impact that would have across the three different methods, but it would be the better one to be reporting. This 99.8% is somewhat, you would look at that and you would normally be a little bit suspicious and then you'd realize that actually it's not accounting for how many variables are getting dumped in there. It looks at them, it figures that the linear regression has the lowest uh, mean square error, has the highest R squared, making it pretty good and then it concludes that's what it liked. I didn't interrogate it any further, I probably could have. And then we move on to the last thing that I asked it. And here it was really more just turning into a bit of a brainstorming. So what other analysis might be useful to perform on this data set? And it gives us quite a big list. Not everything here you could actually use this specific data set. But everything that is listed would be a good piece of analysis if you could organize the right data um, for this, this kind of AIS data that you've got. So the first couple, 
exploratory data analysis, feature importance, classification, clustering, we actually kind of already did. Uh, time series, we don't actually have time series data here. If we did, that is something we would definitely be interested in, but that's not what we've got here. Comparative, yeah, not sure we're that interested in comparing uh, genders and sports. They are going to just have their own unique features. Could do a PCA, not sure it would do much. And survival analysis, I think by number 10 it was maybe starting to struggle a little bit. I mean, certainly you could, that is a piece of analysis. That is an application you could do as athletes. Um, and it's, I guess, slightly different. Normally survival analysis used in more in medical statistics, but it has some quite nice sports applications. Years ago I actually applied it to cricket and cricket innings, and it was uh, did a pretty pretty good job for that. And yeah, career longevity, yeah, that would uh, actually be quite interesting if we did have the right data for that. Maybe there is something about some of those blood cell counts uh, and those other stats that we've got there that could tell us a little bit about which which of those might factor into the longevity of an athlete. So a little bit of a distraction this last one, but overall. This analysis of very simple prompting and admittedly I know the things I want to see so I was going into this not just going do some stats for me because I knew the stuff that I wanted to see but it did a really good job of it quickly and easily and certainly nothing jumps out at me as being kind of suspicious in terms of what it's presenting here and you can validate it yourself. You've got the code. So we know it's done it in Python. We can see all the code there. Interesting to see a little error pop in. But it got there in the end. And then with this, this last one with the modeling, it did a pretty reasonable job of really just answering, doing modeling to answer, answer the question. The question in this case was about the model, but I think we could have quite easily replaced that with a question about something of uh, the relationship between the different variables, something that was more applied to the data set. So this has been data analysis using ChatGPT 4.0. You really do need the paid version. When I have tried this in the free version, I think I got as far as maybe a scatter plot, one other piece of analysis, uh, and then that was all that it would do for the day. But this is really, really useful. I can certainly see myself using it. I think probably the only the only caveat uh, thinking about data ethics and data governance is the fact that we were uploading some data. In this case, it was a public data set. I chose that very intentionally. So a nice public data set. So you can go and recreate this yourself as well if you would like. Certainly, I don't think I would trust the system to be putting data. And in fact, that would be in breach of research ethics pretty much anywhere. So do be mindful of what data you are putting into here. Um, but I think this is a very, very powerful, useful new feature. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching. I'll be back really soon with more videos on AI research stats and random stuff.